now that we've found the data that we need, uh, we can actually start finally uh, exploring that data. Um, so before you can really start to explore the data, you need to understand all of the metadata that you've gathered so far. So you need to be able to answer questions like who created the data and why, what is the subject of the data, um, and hopefully you already know a bit about some of the variables in your data. Um, so yeah, this part of the guide basically covers how to explore data, and I'll demonstrate how to do that by downloading this data set, the largest dog breed data set that we found on Kaggle in the previous video. Um, as you can see, I can download it here. I've already done that, and I got a zip file that I unpacked, and that had a CSV file for uh, every individual year. So if you want to know about what kind of file types you can open and how, um, be sure to check that section in the guide. It's written here under data formats. So because we have a CSV, that's quite convenient because I know that I can use that in um, Excel on Windows, in Numbers on Mac, or in Google Sheets. I'll demo a bit about how to do it in Google Sheets because that's uh, free to use. So everybody has um, access to it. So here are the files that I've downloaded. You can actually open a CSV file with a basic text editor. So not something like Word, but something like text edit or Notepad. Um, and when you open it, you get the actual raw data. So uh, in a CSV, in a comma separated file, um, the first line is uh, all of the column names separated by uh, what we call a delimiter. Uh, in the case of a, C of a CSV file, usually this will be a comma. So you can see here the variable names, and then basically you have on each line, you have one data point, one entry. Um, yeah, so this is the, the real raw data. So let's see if we can import that into something like Google Sheets. Uh, I've got an empty folder here in Google Drive. I'm going to create a new file called data, data exploration. Um, and because it is a CSV file, I'll need to actually import it. Let's do that now. So I want to look at the last year in the data set, um, just so we have something to look at. I could later on also import other uh, uh, years into the same file, or I could open up separate files for them. But let's start with 2017. So when you import a CSV, uh, sometimes all of this will happen automatically, but um, I think it's good to do this manually. Um, we're going to replace the current sheet. We don't need a new sheet for this. So here you can say, you see that this, uh, what, what I talked about before is the delimiter. Uh, that's also called a separator. So it's like a special symbol that tells Google Sheets here um, when a new value is starting in the CSV. So our values are separated by comma. So I'm going to select comma here. So it also can do some work for you already converting some text to numbers. Uh, if, if they are numbers, um, to like format your data in a nice way. I think Excel and numbers probably also do something like this. So this is to help you along a bit. Um, if you want to know a bit more about that, I've also written something about that in um, under tools, I think. Here is, um, uh, there's a video about how to get started with uh, Excel and to snoop around in your data. Um, right, so the data has been imported. So this is just all the raw data. Um, so that's a success already. And what you could do now is um, write down some of the questions that you have about this data set. Um, so that's not no longer about the source of the data set, but more a bit about the content. So you can write down some, for instance, some assumptions that you have. Um, about your data. One assumption that I would have, for instance, here is maybe that um, 
uh, smaller dog breeds have cuter names. I guess that's an assumption that I have. <laughs> um, maybe you could also expect an assumption between the type of name and whether it's a male or a female. So Luke sounds like a male, looks to be a male here. Um, what Do I have any other assumptions? Well, as the data is all from 2017, uh, I, I would expect that all of the entries are evenly divided over the year, but maybe that assumption will, will turn out not to be true. Maybe a lot of people buy dogs at a certain time in the year and then get them registered. So it could be that a lot of people, uh, a lot of these entries are from uh, December. Um, so yeah, basically what I usually do is when I actually get the data set is to write down some of the questions I have about it and some of the assumptions uh, about some of these variables. Um, Um, one nice thing that I can do here, because now it's kind of hard to read through this, but I can convert this basically to a table. So I think Excel has like one button to do that in, in Google Sheets. It's a bit more work. I'm just going to select all of this data. There we go. It's actually 21,000, um, entries. So that's a really nice big data set that we're working with here. Um, and if I press here, create a filter, and I go back to the top. Yeah, you can see that this has changed a bit. And now actually, I can actually filter. So I can actually um, filter the breeds and, and not select any of them except for English pointer, maybe also normal pointer. And then you can see a lot of the um, actual lines have been hidden from view, so I can focus on these pointers. Uh, I can also sort, for instance, by the color alphabetically. Uh, so that's quite useful. Another thing that I like to do in Google Sheets is to freeze one of these rows so that when you scroll down, the row names will, uh, sorry, the, the column names will always uh, remain at the top. That can be really useful. Uh, I could also say, well, the zip code, maybe I'm not interested in, or actually I'm not really interested in the year because that's going to be the same for all of these values. So I can hide that. I don't want to delete it because it might need it later. So in this way, I can already, you know, make it a bit more accessible uh, to myself. Um, so now that I look at this data, uh, I don't know if I can actually answer any new questions uh, that I um, had about my data. For instance, the weight of the dog is not really in here and the traits of the dog is not really in here. So I think this has limited value to my research project. Um, but what one thing it does do is it raises new questions for me. Um, one of the questions I have is, have pointers gotten more popular over the year? So one thing I could do is I could import more of those uh, data files from different years. Um, and then I could uh, count all of the, the pointers. Um, and I could see if that, that value goes up or down. Um, I guess it makes sense to see. Um, uh, yeah, I, I won't make it too uh, complex now, but uh, maybe that's for another video. Uh, but that's a question that it, that it raises. Um, one of the questions I had about this data set before was, uh, where are all these dogs? Basically, how did these dogs get in this data set and where um, are they coming from? Is this about the whole world? The, the names seem to suggest that it's an English speaking country where the data was collected. And now I actually have this zip code and I looked up some of these zip codes uh, with Google Maps, uh, zip code. And now we are actually in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States. So it looks like this value is at least is in Pittsburgh. So I could look up more of these um, zip codes and maybe all of the data is about one big shelter in Pittsburgh. Or maybe this is all the data about dogs in Pennsylvania or dogs in the United States. 
Um, so, so I think that helps me a bit about understanding more about where the data comes from. So that's another important piece of metadata. Um, that also explains why I wasn't able to find Galgo in this data set because that's a very Spanish breed. Um, so this data isn't really that applicable to uh, Roca. Although it does give me some info about pointers, for instance, and I think greyhounds are also in there. Yeah, lots of greyhounds. Um, but yeah, so, so you can see that through actually exploring the data set, um, I found out more about what the data is about. So in this guide, I pretend that, that exploring data is quite a linear process, that you go from one step to the next, to the next, to the next. But in reality, you're constantly learning things that are changing the process itself. Um, the, here, for instance, uh, new questions are raised. Um, uh, I could even realize that I'm not focusing on the right research subject and my whole research subject could change. Um, uh, I could go in a different direction because this gives me more information. So um, this type of research that I'm doing here is quite exploratory. And that means that uh, I have to be flexible enough to let the data guide me in new directions because that's where the real story might be. Uh, so that's an important note I wanted to make here at the end. Uh, don't look at it as one linear like waterfall process, um, but yeah, look at it as a more organic uh, exploration uh, where you're constantly learning. Um, and yeah, the mistakes you make are actually also part of it. So yeah, if you're doing exploratory research, basically anything you learn is beneficial to the project. Um, let's see if I forgot anything. Yeah, so in the guide, I've written down kind of a, a process that you can follow. So one thing to do is you can try to understand what each variable is about. I've already done that a bit here. But for instance, this valid date, I don't really know what that's about yet. So I could try to research that a bit more. Um, also, so, some of these colors don't make sense to me, <laughs> like uh, brindle. I have no idea what that is. Um, so yeah. I could try to understand that a bit more. And another important part is uh, to try and understand the data from individual rows. So I could look at one row like this one and try to understand what the data set is telling me about this one specific dog. So here the information is still somewhat limited. Um, and it's important to understand what limitations there are. Uh, I don't know, for instance, what point in the life of this dog it was registered. So if there was actually a weight column here in this data set and this dog had a, a value there, then I wouldn't know if that was uh, a value when the dog was one year old or 12 years old. Um, so that would be a limitation of that data set, of this data set. So, so I think reading individual lines can can sometimes help a lot in understanding uh, what your data can and cannot tell you. Um, data is always only a view on reality and it's not a complete picture. Uh, yeah, additional steps I could take would be trying to find some patterns in the data. For instance, looking at different breeds over different years, see how, they, how they've changed, maybe uh, looking at more information about dog breeds that seem to disappear from the data. Um, maybe they were outlawed because they were too aggressive, for instance, that could be an interesting like follow-up research question. I could also try to visualize some of this data. I won't do that in this um, uh, video, but I'm sure that you'll see more about that later. And I could try some other tools as well to get a sense of this data. For instance, I might be able to use these zip codes that I found and throw them into Q Q QGIS. Uh, to actually see where all of these dogs have been, um, uh, to which zip codes they're actually connected. So that might give me a, like a nice map of where all of these dogs are. Um, yeah, so that was basically all I wanted to tell you. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck on finding and exploring data. Bye.
Und auch Luca. Dach. She's still sleeping. Okay.